Curse in particular are very effective. Curse has had, uh, if I'd say they have an, an Achilles heel this split, it's just been positioning and just inability to force the right team fights. If the other team has a move speed advantage on them as well, it just kind of exacerbates that problem. Funny Foo Foo's Thresh is there, but it looks like they're going for Void Boy's Quadra Lulu. That's where it's going. We actually saw Lulu on supports during Super Week as well. So, figuring that one's in mid for now. We'll yeah. see what Dignitas has on the other side. Now, Annie so far locked in right away for Kiwi. Especially when you think uh, way back as we see a rise that could actually there be mid lane. Go. That could actually be a mid lane rise because Scar used mm -hmm. to play a lot of rise. Yes, sir. Uh, we think all the way back to when Void Boy was on Dignitas. And Dignitas was the first to run like a super heal shield composition when they ran a solo lane Lulu. It was actually Void Boy who did Lulu in the top lane for Dignitas, and Scar would do Soraka in the mid lane. Uh, which kind of goes to show you when they both ended up playing Lulu last week, Void Boy got like 11 kills and a quadra kill, yeah. and then Scar went 0 and 3. So it's definitely more of a Void Boy champion. Curse now waiting to pick out here. Actually, get the Pantheon through. Dominate has 14 bans for Pantheon against him. But not today. But not today. We'll see what they decide to lock in. They see a rise and an Annie. Quite a bit of crowd control right now coming in from Dig if they get an engage. Yeah. Looks like it might be Elise with Pantheon left open. That a lot of people are going for Elise. Yeah, not necessarily. How much has uh, Dominate played it, though? Only four times. Yeah. Uh, still second most played jungler. He's had a lot of success on it. It's a highly aggressive jungler. Like Dominate. Ooh, you know what? They're <laughs> going to do that Elise Thresh combo again. We could maybe see a repeat of the the gank kill, where he just takes the lantern at exactly the yep. right time, goes in and gets the stun. I think the, there's definitely going to be a Thresh as the last pick for Curse. Looks like Crumbs takes his Lee Sin back out as well. He's 2-2 two and two on that. Looks like he's trying to better his score there. Quaz for the top lane. We've seen him choose quite a few things. He had four straight Trundle games coming into Super Week. Pretty crazy. He loves his Trundle right now. We'll see what they have. I have played against that swing. It's not fun. It's, it's too bad that there's, they're hovering on it, which generally means they're not going to lock it in, but that yeah. would be so cool because Void Boy could absolutely take Lulu into the top lane, and it would allow Quas to play his mid lane swing, which is devastating, and he just doesn't get to bring it out. It's his like it's his like one of his signature picks. Yeah, it is. Come on, man. 15 nice seconds left on the clock. Probably a Thresh, and then... Shivana. Ooh, Aatrox. Aatrox has been seen quite a bit in Europe. Why not make a return back to the DNA? Yeah, the solo lane Aatrox. Especially with the gank pressure from Elise. If, if they're going up against the Rise top lane, that's a very punishing pick. He can basically jump onto Rise from within Rise's cast range. So if they ever want to turn aggressive, they're going to be able to on that top lane Rise that Cruiser is playing. Uh, I do like the fact that Dignitas has put Lee Sin in the jungle to go with the top lane Rise, because uh, very, I'd say Rise is relatively weak in the early game, very vulnerable to dying. But as long as he gets his farm, uh, he will become a monster in the late game, and, and Lee Sin should help to get Dignitas to that point. At least that's the thought between comboing those two together. Scara taking up Oriana in the mid lane. That'll be his first time on that. This split definitely reverted it, reverted back to it a few times in previous splits, but. Mm. Gotta say, it was not one of the stronger champions. It's never really been one of Scar's go-tos. Uh, the fact, I think, that Curse has the Lulu and then mm. the thing to go in with the Lulu, they I think, gives them, <laughs> gives them a bit of an edge in this champion select. They have a lot of champions that they should be very comfortable on. Quas with the Aatrox, even though it has been seen in Europe, is more of an off-brand pick, mm -hmm. which is what Quas has typically excelled on. Yeah, but actually, absolutely get back to that. But right now, the teams have locked in their champs. So let's tally the votes. LOLesports.com says 50% of you think Dignitas are going to come out on top. And to speak to that, Quas' Aatrox a little bit uh, going up against Dignitas here. When he built that trundle and he brought out the Zephyr, the knowledge was uh, that we heard from you know our stats guys was that's actually what he does on his Aatrox. He goes for yeah. high attack speed. He builds that Zephyr, the Blade of the Rune King, and he just crushes things around him. Hopefully it's quick enough because you die the, quick. One of the interesting things to note on Aatrox is attack speed is kind of doubly effective on him because not only does it provide him damage, it also provides him a lot of defense and sustain. Mm. Uh, since he has that three-hit proc that can heal him as well, uh, it is more important attack speed slows and attack speed on him than it is with other champions. We'll see what he decides to go. The inventories are clean and ready for building. We're on to the rift here. Game 82, week 9. It's going to be Curse versus Dig. Dig's on red. Curse is on the blue side. And it looks like they're going to exit the bases and a health crystal start for Cruiser. 
Definitely not going for high damage early on Rise. Sometimes you'll see a Mana Crystal start from Rise, and he'll just try and bully someone out of lane. But he, he actually has uh, 707 health to start the game on Rise. He has went highly defensive in his runes and masteries. Interesting. Yeah. Scar taking Ignite. No barrier there. Not afraid of the Void by Lulu. He feels Command Protect will be enough for that shield. <laughs> See how he plays in the mid lane. A little dance off here between Cutie Pie and Cop. <laughs> oh. Next patch, there's a chance we won't see this again. Yep. No wards Ooh. until two minutes. Oh, he broke the silence. Please, brutality. That bastard. Yep. Mark it down. Looks like nobody's getting too much movement. Crumbs didn't find anybody in that brush just above mid lane. And dominates hiding in the brush just next to him. A little game of cat and mouse back and forth. Volatile Spider. I'm sure he's got a little bit of vision. So quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers All right. for quiet. Yeah. <laughs> right there go the wards and an invade right on top of one just to get a ward down. They're making yeah. sure they have vision of Isle Dominates Elise. Uh, he was actually thinking about starting blue, but honestly, when someone wards your buff like that, you want to take it right away. Because otherwise, the team will realize if you've missed it and then take it while you're away. Uh, it does eliminate the ability of Isle Dominate to think about any kind of counter jungling, though. Well, we'll see. Crumbs likes to get himself in the face of the other jungler as well. Hopefully, that'll give Scara a little bit of relief pressure if Dominate has to deal with him, because Scara will be farming under his turret. Not going to be hard for Orianna. It'll be quite easy with that passive of Clockwork wind up. We'll see how it goes from here on out. Lulu's got that strong push in the mid lane. Dominate to the Wraith, so he'll be over to blue after this. Junglers are going to be on the same side of the map. We've seen this change up a few times with the bottom lanes going for fast level twos, and that looks like it'll be in favor of Cop and Bunny. Yeah, might see some level two aggression from these guys. Oh, there's a nice headshot. Not with that much harass, though. <laughs> Kiwi Kid would be a little ill-advised to go in for something. Dorn Shield starts as well on supports. Even though uh, the new support itemization has seen a lot of play, Doran Shield, especially with the aggression. You know what's interesting? We haven't seen any Morgana yet today. Uh, she had a huge resurgence in Super Week because she is so good against the aggressive supports thanks to that Black Shield and the new Spell Thief's Edge, giving her all that right. gold and mana from just putting down a Tormented Soil. But, you know, not today. Not yet. Just yet. We did see most of the champion or most of the players that have already had their games today really only sticking to two or three champions. We'd have Kiwi Kid trying to go into a Moomoo, if you remember that. Mm. Trying to go outside the box. Didn't work for him too well, but they're going to try to work this in the top lane. Cruiser playing a bit aggressive to pull in that gank from Quaz. Or I should say, engage from Quaz. Yeah. If he's going to play this aggressive, you'd actually want Owl Dominate to come up for a counter gank. This would be a predictable gank by Crumbs, which is why he's very skittish about going in and helping, because he actually expects Owl Dominate to be waiting in the wings. But like, instead, they see him mid. Dominate will get the Wraith. Scar at least wants a bit of vision on that, mm. and they will be able to stop him from coming over. Scar will have a safe top side, but now he's got to worry about his own bottom side here. You were speaking of the Orianna passive before, though, uh, how she does extra damage with right. her auto attack stacking up. She's actually one of the few mid laners who can uh, go a little bit toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lulu in those trades mm. because she can shield herself much like Lulu and then also get that extra auto attack damage. She can kind of be on par. Uh, Scar actually compared the current Lulu to the old Orianna that used to be seen as the uh, next big utility mid laner in the sense that it's the mid laner that can also do the 1v1s but then provides more utility for the team. Uh, that's probably why Scar decided to pick Orianna because he was trying to match the Lulu mm -hmm. as best he could on a team specific level. And that's going to be a pretty heavy mana usage for Scar. He's going for that level W so he's got to use mana every time in that dissonance not favorable to your mana bar. We'll see how if he can keep in lane, but he will have that same amount of damage for now. Void Boy, or rather Dominate. He missing out on that Sonic Wave. He throws back to Cutie Pie, and they're gonna get another hook, but did he want it? Bunny Fufu -Foo was quite low there. He gets the Cripple and the Sonic Wave, but no resonating strike. Would have been very bad to take it. Yep. Got the Rast down. You can see the junglers just have a collision course for each other. These lanes are pretty much identical across the board. And it's, it's actually a, an interesting game as far as scaling is concerned. I feel like, mm -hmm. I feel like Curse will get a much stronger mid-game, but if it actually gets very late, when Ryze really gets his items rolling, 
I think they would then take over. Nice oh, hook right in between minions. That is definitely lane Whoa. presence for them in the bottom lane. That's going to give them a good advantage, and hopefully Curse Cop and Bunny Fufu are hoping to keep that. Yeah, the headshot with a huge amount of damage right after that hook. Cutie Pie doesn't have to use Flash or Barrier, though, but he absolutely has to go back to base. All right, so that starts to create a little bit of pressure on the map now. Curse takes advantage in the bottom. Scar knows that he can't go any farther behind in lane. He's only one minion now. Okay, they're tied, so he's good in mid. Quas and Cruiser in the top lane, 40 to 32. He's bought actually another Doran so Quas can stay alive, but still go hard. I am actually very surprised that I Will Dominate has not spent time trying to kill Cruiser up here. Uh... I do feel like, at least gank-wise, it is a huge mismatch. If Cruiser ever pushes past the halfway point, Quas would be able to jump on him with any gank support from Lee. They could chain stuns very easily. Yeah. Uh, but they, they haven't done so. Quas is slowly out farming, and it's also because Quas has had the minion wave in a mm -hmm. pretty pushed position this whole time, and a turret dive would be too dangerous. We'll roam up from Kiwi Kid there to keep some safety around the team as well. You were saying in that top lane, Cruiser would be an immediate flash if they were to gank him. They could just come back for that. Even just now. Holy macaroni! That is some HP right there. Oh, oh the flash! Just a little uh, on the outside, uncalculated. Yeah, could have saved that one. It would have secured a kill later, but play the box. He takes it right onto the trap. Kiwi Kid getting a bit of sugar on that one. He's going to go down, but he does go down with his own retribution kill. This is just going to be a walkout. Trying to he make a break for it. He for Cutie Pie, but he does. No! Does he have vision? No, he has the flash. Now he has the vision. He flashed over the wall because he knew he would have lost it again to the brush. Yeah, he knew he had to take it all the way to the other end, but that was a... Ill-fated escape by I'm a cutie pie. He thought he'd make it away. Great plays by Curse in the bottom lane, allowing them to go for this direct. Yeah, Curse already had the upper hand, and Dignitas tried to take it back. Bunny Foof, like you said, those heat-seeking hooks puts, puts Curse on top. And now they're going to grab a dragon here about 735, 726 into the game. Curse does seem to have Dignitas' number. 2-0 against them thus far this split, and really a strong performance early. Again, that synergy between Cop and Bunny Fufu. Newfound synergy, yep. really. Cop been so consistent, and Bunny just landing those hooks. I know there's a lot of priority bans nowadays, but the Thresh when you're yep. against Curse, it's got to start making it onto that list. And that Thresh made it quite far down the list as well mm -hmm. before it was picked. Curse knew what they wanted as soon as that Elise came in. You said it. Thresh is coming out in this game. They've locked it up, locked down a few kills already. And now Dominate's probably having the time of his life. He doesn't have to worry about bottom. He can go anywhere he wants. Yeah, lane's, lane's still progressing. This is uh, getting very close to the point in the game where Curse would look to just snowball through Dignitas. Uh, the Cruiser is slow enough farming here that he won't be super dangerous on Rise for quite a while. He's actually just going to be extremely squishy. Uh, I'd say before Scar finishes Death Cap, and he's so far away from that, because he doesn't even have his Athene's Unholy Grail. Yep. Curse is going to be so much stronger up until those points happen. And they're just they're just getting started with how much they're going to try to do in about the next 10 minutes. Looking at Diggs' full fight capacity, once Cruiser gets that desperate power on, once Scar gets a good shockwave and Kiwi Kid gets Tibbers, there's a lot of area of effect mm -hmm. that Curse is going to have to take into account. A dragon fight would be perfect for that. But like you said, it's got to get no. there first. They yeah. got to stay alive in the landing phase. It would be like a dragon fight in 20 minutes would be good for Dignitas. Yeah. I mean, right. the dragon fight that happens next should be a huge advantage to Curse unless mm -hmm. Dignitas landed perfect synergy with uh, like a Tibbers and an Orianna ult right on top of all five people on Curse. Right. Uh, like an Athene's Unholy Grail, Lulu for Void Boy, is just going to be so much more than Dignitas is able to cut through in these fights. Crumbs. Trying to thward off jungle pressure here, getting some deep wards in and possibly create some opportunities for themselves Ooh, later. Good. A little face-to-face -face cat and mouse game here. Dominate is not going to get the upper hand. He is also out of mana in spider form. He doesn't need it, but he is still in a bad position. Forced to flash over the wall, has pulled Cop and Bunny Fufu out of lane, and that might help Dig get six in that bottom lane to stay alive because Cop and Bunny have been six for a while. Yeah, Crumbs is like the guy who's trying to make them get through this part. Uh, I'm a cutie pie and Kiwi Kid are also... Uh, just as good as Curse right now in the mid game. It's basically the solo laners where the main disparity exists in power levels. Uh, and Crumbs is going to try and make something happen in the spot lane. It's pretty much necessary. And he is. He has successfully snuck behind them. He's going to get spotted by that tri -brush They have to go now. He did a great job creating that pressure. Dominate can't help. He knows exactly what's happening there. Flashes in the resonating strike into the stun Tibbers. Very well communicated and set up well beforehand. Nice shot right there. 
not quite a Lee Sin kick to threshold combo, <laughs> but it still counts. It still gets them a kill on a Bunny Foo Foo. Not enough vision to cover that one. You can see it's actually quite dark on the bottom side of the map for Curse. They did that right when Bunny Foo Foo was in the lane and Cop and him felt safe under the turret. Taking advantage of those little missteps and Dignitas gives himself a good bit of gold. See Scar in the mid lane, keeping up 95 to 91, so he's not getting pushed in too much by the little lane bully. Dominate trying to counter jungle a little bit. It's actually uh, just the fear of what Quas can do 1v1 to Cruiser is really pushing him out of that lane. Mm -hmm. 95 to 62. Even though Rise is great late game, if you're not farming and not getting kills or assists, you are never going to make it to that point. Yeah. Uh, just now getting Kieran, Kieran Catalyst, it's trouble for him. Oh, Big very well called by Crumbs. There's a, the repel out, resonating strike. I was going to say almost hit, but they get right back out of him. Crumbs is going to be going down in this. The blood well's there, so he's going to stay in range for a, a bit more. Shows you the burst potential yeah. of that Aatrox, but a very good counter gank once again by Crumbs. He needs to predict almost all of these because it's going to be so much longer until Cruiser is actually... Uh, Super relevant mm -hmm. in 2v2s. That was only a one for one because they basically had I Will Dominate dead before the fight started. Level 7's just being hit up here in the bottom lane for Dig is Curse already sitting on those level 7's. So see a bit of a rotation here. He's definitely going to call down Boy Boy right into this, but they're going to have to sandwich it. I'm going to say they're hoping on just sheer speed to the engagement and hope they get there faster than Curse, but they all back off. Yeah, mid lane staying very even. Very, very even. Boy Boy and Scar. Really just trading farm with each other. Not able to get huge harass down because they both just have pretty powerful shields for themselves. Uh, if it ever comes to that. It's really the top lane where the main disparity is. Well, we saw Nian had a very hard day when he first played Ryze here in the spring LCS 2014. And he was pretty much maybe 9 CS at level 3 because he was pushed off so yeah. far. But had near the highest CS at the end mm -hmm. of the game. That's the problem, though. Can Dig hold out that long? It is going to be the Rod of Ages tier stack coming in, so they're going to need another 10 minutes once that's finished, even. Yeah, Quas actually had uh, enough gold if he wanted to build a Tiamat, but instead he went Hex Drinker and a Pickaxe because he just wants extra damage to try and kill Cruiser. Nice hook for a CS there. Yeah, get a little bit of extra gold in. Got to make it count, bring home the bread. 1,000 gold, about 1.5 actually in the lead for Curse, so they haven't pushed this lead too much, but they are making sure it stays in their favor. Turrets yet to fall here. Both teams have found an equal amount of kills. And you can see mm -hmm. not too much of that gold disparity. 300 in favor of Cop in the bottom lane. That's just from that early kill. Warding positions at Dragon right now are favoring Curse. They have been slightly winning the laning phase, and they've gotten first dibs on these wards. It means Dignitas is in danger trying to get it back. Always nice to do a good bit of damage, but even better if you can wow. kill someone. Boy Boy with the fancy fingers flashes out real quick, and it looks like they are able to get a good bit of pressure. Dominate, doing what he does best, going a little too hard, and he gets dominated as well. One for one there. Dragon's still up. Yeah, Cruiser beat Quas to the spot, though, and getting a second kill on the on the rise could be very valuable for Dignitas later on in this game. Those kills have kind of supplanted his poor CS and given him a respectable amount of farm. Bunny Foo Foo trying for a shot in the dark in the bottom lane there. But I'm a cutie pie, senses. He figured something was coming. He's going down a little bit in CS here, but he should be able to clean it up as the wave crashes into the turret. Ping's still going down as Curse is trying to make something happen for themselves. Dig is always on the reaction. Yeah, Curse is uh, trying to wait for I Will Dominate to come back because mm -hmm. I think they still want to force this dragon. Uh, but it's a lot of time investment with Quas out of the top lane. It will be big. Skara just used that ultimate. He's going to try and steal this with his litter lance, I think. No, he's too scared. There's wards. Yep. They back off. They're working without command shockwave right now. They're looking to get in here. Pink ward gets clear. Pink ward let down so they can clear it out. And they set up on either side. Yeah, this is an incredibly important moment in the game. Can Quas find an initiation? And can Scar wait long enough for his shockwave? Uh, there's also a flash up on Annie. The initiation potential for both teams is very, very high. Curse, as the stronger team, and Les Dignitas lands their skills just right. Yep, Curse playing the mid lane wave, and they're going to get some attack damage down on the turret. A good clear as well causes Dignitas to have to respond. Cutie Pie finally pulls himself out of the bottom lane. Kiwi Kid just on the outside. That could have been the initiation they were looking for. Yeah, by the hair of his chinny chin chin. That would have been so <laughs> huge on Curse right there. And actually, the standoff is, is long enough. Uh, that Curse might lose out pretty big here. There's a huge minion wave that Quas wants to go and get. If he goes for that and Cruiser doesn't follow, 
Uh, that would mean a dragon for Dignitas. The teleport here. We do see Bunny Fufu walking down on the bottom side. That's going to be a call from Kiwi Kid yeah, if it comes into vision. Yeah, as soon as Quas goes top, then they jump on the dragon. They, they, they are going to try for an Elise steal because they can put a lantern down and get him out of the, the dragon pit safely, but it's tough to execute. Not even going to try for it. Looks like they're going to save face on this one. Good control by Dig. They waited it out, and it pays off so far. Go through some inventories. There's a little bit more gold is stacked up there. The Athene's unholy grails have been finished up by the mid lanes and just sitting on the regular brown boots for now. We're looking at an Elder Lizard to that spo the Golem Spirit from Dominate to Crumb. So a little bit of a difference there and aggression to uh, support for the team. And they're still able to trade the top turret for the Dragon. So global gold wise, it doesn't cost them much. Uh, does give Rise, though, a lane to farm in more safely as Cruiser continues to try and move towards that late game. Uh oh. Good ball placement, good warding, keeping Dignitas safe. Which may Walk take a little bit through. of damage. Yeah. They know they're also safe as well. They might be able to bait out an engagement they want. Curse 2,000 gold up. We'll be transferring this over to Void Boy. Really, Curse is waiting for those fights that they can engage that gets Dig on the run. We saw that's how quadra, the Quadra came up for Void Boy. It's when they had the other, the opposing team, or it would be Dig, just running away the whole time. 17 minutes on this one. There's a blue buff battle in the mid lane to both level 11s for Void Boy and Skara. So that would actually have been a really, really big fight if they were going to be coming up big on it. In the Interesting. Dragon Interesting. Quas has rushed a Mav Malmordius as well. Uh, not much attack speed on Aatrox. It's Pretty true. much just straight AD here. The attack speed would be nice, but the straight AD is allowing mm -hmm. when he jumps in, his first couple hits are just uh, hitting for that much harder. But his sustained damage is much lower than it could be if he had something like that Zephyr he likes building. Or even, a, as strange as it sounds, a wit's end against this team because there's so much magic damage. Uh, Mob Memorius is good for the shield, though. Talisman to Ascension already finished up on Bunny Fufu. Going hard in that bottom lane. Good a bit of gold to him. Kiwi Kid still trying to get that even to its second form. 18 minutes on the game as the kills. Just staying even. But the turret's now in favor of Curse. However, they are on the back foot as Dignitas, with the last dragon and that bit of engagement, has found a way to get under Curse's skin. Not too much damage, so Void Boy's doing well for himself. The Athene's keeping both of these guys pretty safe in the mid lane. They're not going to really be killing each other. And I don't think Scar is going to be going hard while he knows Wild Growth is up. But Quas, he may be able to tilt the tables here if he gets his way down to the bottom. Yeah. Very scary Aatrox at this point. See 57 more farm than Cruiser, and they're going to look to try and take more <laughs> turrets here. The map pressure is somewhat accumulating uh, for them here. Skara can't even play on that turret in the mid lane. He is just afraid of it. He knows that Quas is somewhere hunting around the side. Let's see what happens here. Crumbs is waiting on the wing. The stun is up. The flash is there. But they just don't have the place under the mini wing. Yeah, and really, Dignitas is, is kind of close to getting through the difficult part in the game here. Curse hasn't really taken many advantages out of when Void Boy hit his Athene's Unholy Grill or when Quas has had Cruiser push back. Mm -hmm. They are fairly content taking a very minuscule gold lead into the mid and late game of this match. They need to get more turret pressure down yep. first and foremost if they want to win this game. Uh-oh. Oh, That's a nice big start. Hit. Actually Bait. throws down the ultimate there as well. The flash was used to get out of that engagement, but Quas finds himself in a bad spot. He does have Dominate just on the backside. I don't know if it's going to help, though. They get down into Crumbs. He thinks he can do the damage. Crumbs gets the safeguard over, blocking some of the execute. Lily. Wild growth from over the wall. Quas is going to live. The life steal. Is it good enough? And it is. Dominate and the rest of the team come in as the cavalry. What a support move by Boy by Boy Boy beating Scar up there. That's why Curse is so lethal at this point in the game in a fight where they were very outnumbered early and Quas got completely caught off guard. They were still able to come out on head. See, he jumps very quick on the cruiser, immediately realizes the error of his ways. He hasn't even moved yet. Yeah, if you look in the mid lane, Lulu just moves now and he makes it all the way up there while he's regenning in his death form. A very timely uh, save wow. there right before the execute would have hit from Lee Sin. The Bates crumbs in, then he gets the life steal from his W. And Scar's in trouble as well. Uh-oh, still going hard, Curse. Maybe taking a little too much off of what they just got, but they make sure they chew all their food before they swallow this yeah. one. They're going to go ahead and get the, the first turret in mid lane. Finally starting to drop down the structures, starting to deny that vision to Dignitas, and it looks like they're not going to stop anytime soon. Yeah, all off of that crazy fight in the top lane, they're able to get a lot more than this. Uh, 
taking down that turret very quickly. Krom's trying to defend it, but they just do not have the cavalry to stop this. It's like they'll have the shield. Nicely going on to Quas, and they take it down. Ooh. Great plays by Curse. They've really lately been taking a yeah. definitive hold on their leads and doing something yeah. with them. A lot of times, team will be okay with that lead, and they'll just say, we'll do better through the dragons and getting turrets. And it's often been Curse this season. Mm -hmm. That was That's pretty true. much the last moment where they could have made that move. Uh, and it was also a bit more of a reaction than a force from them, honestly. Dignitas did a great job of baiting Quas, uh, but it was just a, a very good response back from Curse. Do have to point out, though, the uh, Aatrox Bloodthirst doing twice as much healing when he's below half health it was so clutch there for Quas in that last fight. And he's continuing to stack the magic resist. Well, Quas seems like an expert of putting himself in those situations and coming out on top. A little bit of help from the team there was required, but it still made it look quite flashy. Rabadon's built up now by Voy Boy. That quadra kill is coming a lot more of a possibility again. See if the last whisper might be finished up. Actually, the pickaxe built in with Cop here is he had a little bit of gold. You can see he goes actually straight for the last whisper for that penetration in his build. I really wonder what Cutie Pie is doing with his build as well. Uh, he is kind of trying to trademark that Ghost Blade Lucian yep. for the culling, but he just kind of threw in a BF sword before he started building towards his Ghost Blade. Uh, might be looking for a little bit of a just extra AD really early on for a small burst of damage, but not as much sustain. This dragon fight's going to be huge. Dignitas actually has a superior position for this one. And Cruiser does have a couple items. He's not quite where he wants to be yet. This actually is great positioning, especially with an Orianna. If she can come from the side with the Shockwave, which Skara has completely Ooh. backed off. He's at Wolves, so the team has called that they really aren't going to fight this. No, he gets with the team. Yeah. Interesting. Curse is too strong to take off. Yeah. Also, like the Bloodthirster Last Whisper build, for a cop, that is basically the ace in the hole mm -hmm. build. You could see it caught Crumbs completely by surprise, how much damage it did, because he is completely itemized, basically for that skill. And it's another thing that stopped Dignitas from coming in for that dragon. Usually you'll see a team bring out the sweepers when they're in the lead so they can keep control, but Dignitas is trying to regain control, putting three sweepers on the map now. See what they can do with that. Top lane, or top jungle has Cruiser and Scar in it right now, so they're not really looking to engage. Dignitas is just looking to stay alive, but now 6,000 gold behind. Yeah, this is about what Curse needed to stay ahead of mm -hmm. Dignitas's evolving champions here. Cruiser's still not even able to finish that Archangel staff. His tier is only 475 of 750 on Rise, and they continue to get pushed in here. Three turrets to zero. Maybe bot lane would be a good place for Curse to go next. They have to be a little bit careful because Baron uh, is still alive on the map, but it would be another nice logical move for Curse to try and make a play. It's going to start getting harder and harder for Dignitas to really retaliate in these fights, too. Quas level 14 to Cruiser's 12 right now. Skara has kept Ooh. up. He's 14 as well, but that discrepancy means somebody's dying real quick yeah. in the fights. I think that ward... Just saw a Curse coming in, but that's a tough escape. Oh, they uh, tried to lock down Kiwi, but he gets Tibbers out. Good Wild Growth actually continues the fight. I thought Dig was getting out of this one, but Curse has the lockup required. Buddy Fufu says we can keep this one going. Oh, no. A shockwave onto two just on the right side, but here Ooh. comes Quas. A huge implosion of damage going out. Four members down, and Cruiser is left wondering on the other side of the map. Monstrous play there by Curse. Exactly the move they wanted to do. Dignitas was sticking around at an old and dead turret, basically. Curse comes in. The stunt lands for both sides, which just delays it. Then just the move speed provided by Lulu and the slowing of Glitterlance allowed them to chase down. And then because Aatrox had such a big lead, he comes in for the cleanup. Even though the Shockwave was able to hit two, Quas hits two as well and just blows them up. This could be an inhibitor turret. A completely in-your-face composition. Trying to hook one out there. Curse is going to have to be a little careful. They do blow a flash on that one. Cop has to stay safe. But they get themselves out alive with all five members and Talisman because they can. Yeah. Big power play. Six turrets to zero now, Riv. Yeah. Curse taking all of the advantages that they would want to in the mid-game. And now that we're approaching late game here, they're just so far ahead. It might not matter that Dignitas has the rise Oriana combo. The magic resist has been stacked up yep. by Quas, Banshee's Veil, Maw, and a Mercury Treads. Plus, Cutie Pie just hasn't been fed enough to slice through Aatrox. Uh, Crumbs might try to go for something. He does see the Gauls. 
It looks like he's going to back off on that. Scar is going to shield himself up. Grab mid lane, so Dig starts to grab a bit of that gold. Hopefully, it works out for Skara. His Rabadons is finished. Skara also has a blue elixir on him as well. They're trying to make an impact in these fights. Skara does a lot of that. Uh, generally, when he builds his death cap, he will also build a blue elixir. Uh, he is going to need to be the catalyst for a big play. Mm -hmm. He'd have to land a big shockwave, but I mean, just look at... Look at all the magic resist that Curse is starting to put together. Unless he was able to catch Cop with something, uh, I, I feel like they're just going to be laughing off his Orianna down at this point with no magic penetration. And what has become yeah. 185 magic resist on Quas, they just don't seem to have the firepower right now. Yeah. And your initial burst of damage is going to be hit by a Banshee's Veil, so you're already missing out on that. They are so far ahead with gold that those Banshee's Veils are pretty much going to nullify the fight Dignitas brings to the table. And it's really unfortunate, too, because Dignitas' wards are all in the wrong spots. They put a bunch of forward wards into Curse's jungle that are just useless for them right now because Curse is going for that inhibitor. Looks like they're going to get it. Completely flexing their muscles here in the base of Dignitas. Ace in the hole goes out. Cruiser actually not taking too much damage on that one. He's got a chain vest for himself, so he stays healthy. Crumbs looking on the outside. He himself just hits level 12. Dick tries goes. to go the team. It's going to be big damage from Tabers to Culling. Comes out. Focus on a Scar. The hook goes down. Dominates very low, but Scar gets out and he drops back to Cutie Pie. Takes him down. A good shot coming in from Cop, and the team is trying to focus on Quas, but he is just stealing so much health back that he does not go down. And he would still have his passive even if he yeah. fell. Bunny Poofer did go down, and Crumbs goes way in. Looks like Crumbs goes down himself. Quas is going to eat that one up. Bloodwell keeps him safe in the initial fight as he walks his way out. The rest of the team, they are limping away, but Curse with the victory there. Yeah, inhibitor and two kills. They ate a wallop of Dignitas AoE damage in that fight as well, uh, but they were still able to come on top. Just watch the combos here from Dignitas. They do actually get a really good shockwave from Scara, but as we said, they can kind of laugh off that damage. If he had a little bit of magic pen, it would have been enough. They just couldn't get the finish here. And then Crumbs gets a, uh, he must just get a little bit baited here or something. He thinks he could finish off Boy Boy, but he had another shield. And that is the frustration of playing against an AP Lulu. Crumbs goes down. Lee Syndrome. I yeah, I think I can. Yeah, yeah, Lee Syndrome. Everyone can sympathize with that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hit the cue. Looking at just about a 10,000 gold lead coming in here. About 9,000 actually, right on the dot we should say. Six to one. Very big for Curse right now. They've got the map opened up. They can pretty much do what they want. And Quaz, again, playing these champions, he can just become a single menace on and really cause the whole team to have to focus him. Curse has a couple of those. Yep. Just for context, Boy Boy's help pick shield is 504 right now. He uses Wild Growth. He's not even level 16 yet. It would do 670. He'll be getting it's like a thousand. even more health. Like, like a close thousand to extra safety. Doesn't suck whatsoever. 12 to 5, uh, just about 29 minutes into this one. Crumbs trying to do what they can to clean up these wards. Like you said, they have a lot of forward wards, but they're not able to use any yet. They just know when Curse is coming for a really long time. Yeah. Well, they were there 20 seconds ago. They might be here. Now. They should be here. Great estimate. 3 0 and 5 for Voidboy. 3 0 and 4 for Cop. They're coming out quite strong in this game. We said when Voidboy gets that Lulu. He's able to put himself on top and help carry the team. He's doing just that. Big Baron Force right here. A lot of things can come out of Fog of War and catch Dignitas when they try and get vision control. Also, I'm a Cutie Pie is stuck defending the Super Minions in the bottom lane. That's the best inhibitor to take down if you're blue side, by the way, because someone does have to station themselves to defend it, and it is as far away from Baron as you can get that person. So Curse basically having a 4v5 here. They can take down Baron quickly, but a steal would be a real possibility if Crumbs can get in for the attempt. Here's Bunny Fufo. He's on the backside with Boy Boy, keeping him safe. Ace of the hole. Oh, Ooh, Scar yeah. very low there, about 1,000 HP to his name. They hook up Crumbs to make sure he can't get in the pit, but everybody's going to have to turn off. Dominate's trying to do Baron by himself right now. This could maybe be a bad situation. Cruiser getting a kill for himself. Baron goes to Dominate. Looks like four will hold it, and they decide to back out. Yeah, Chris kept a couple Ooh. people inside the pit there. Uh, knowing that it wasn't all five of Dignitas, they thought they could win the fight anyway. They just took one death for a Baron buff on four. Most likely worth it. They should be looking for a turret dive once they go back and shop. Look at three, four pink wards around the Baron. They only have one more. It's not, is it on the map? Oh, no. He's gonna be Somebody going to be going for Cutie Pie. Cutie Pie, stay in. Oh, he has no armor. Wait a minute. 
No arm around Quas, but can he stick him around long enough? He thought right Cutie here. Pie's guns around safety. Absolutely not. The backup has arrived. Gonna get a turret. Oh, he's safe now. Cutie Pie better put those on safety. Try to teleport oh. home. Oh, the super minions are doing so much. Haha, <laughs> spikes to the face. Kill coming in for Curse. Looks like they're gonna be able to push the bottom lane. With uh, Baron down now, they're pretty much objective free. They can fly around the map wherever they want. Yeah, they might. Hmm. It's an interesting lane for them to start going down. Uh, they know the inhibitor is respawning soon. The announcer just tipped them off. They're going to be trying to get a refresh on that inhibitor fairly shortly. Let's see. Timing it very nicely. Looks like they're going to get themselves well into position before Dignitas can respond. And also, really weren't there for it. I was going to say the minion wave was already pushing up, so nobody from Dig was there to clear it. They're just trying to play it so they don't all die because they know it's such a possibility with Curse being so far ahead. Banshee's veils are getting popped off with that command move of Scar's ball, but they're not really putting down too much damage. Yeah, and even though it's about a 10,000 gold differential, this game has Ooh. been close because Curse is kind of racing against time playing against Dignitas here. The fact that they've taken this inhibitor now a second time in only 31 minutes is just what Curse had to do to win this game. They're going to probably rotate all the way around uh, to the other lane and get those outer turrets out of the way. Glacial Shroud built up on Cruiser. These fights are going to be a little bit longer now for Dignitas. They can start to cycle that power more than once. Both both Ryze and Orianna become great champions to outplay somebody, be able to dish out a ton of damage in a fight. They can really surprise you. Dig's looking to put a lot of priority on those two to come out big in the fights. 13 to 6 at 32 minutes. We'll have to see if they can do anything about a Baron coming up, if they can hold it. It's still ticking down about one and a half minutes left onto Curse. So we've got about four and a half before Baron spawns. Yeah, Quas. I'm wondering if they're going to try to do a split push with him, as they have done in the pass with the lead, or if they can just five-man uh, turret dive. The longer they wait as well, the more dangerous this becomes. I think when Scar gets a Void Staff is when those shockwaves that he's been landing very well could actually have a monstrous impact in team fights. Uh, like I said, this game mm -hmm. is closer than it appears by looking at the yeah. score screen. The Baron buff is up right now. It's, it's very real possibility Curse wins the next fight and just wins the game, but if they don't, if that gets turned around, they would be in very real danger of losing this game outright. We can't forget about Cutie Pie either. He's definitely got the right build going in here, not going for the Last Whisper. Who's he need it for? Goes for the Infinity Edge because he's not looking at any armor. That can make an impact. Yeah. Everybody on Curse is just stacking magic resistance, mm -hmm. almost to a fault. I mean, we saw how quickly, I mean, Cutie Pie uh, procked the Quas passive in yeah. that split push. I mean, now, now the Quas has 242 magic resist. That is great. He is going to try and isolate Rise, but if the whole Dignitas team peels back and just tries to focus him down, there's a good chance they could take out a pretty hefty damage to him. Well, we saw Dignitas has been able to put up a good fight at their inhibitor once or twice now, causing Curse to go back. They've been able to get the inhibitor, but that's only two times now. They're not really gaining anything else. They've got an inhibitor, but they've been stopped there. 33 minutes in, they need more because it's... Stacking up for Cruiser. He's going to have that Saracen Brace soon. He's going to have that extra shield for himself that he won't have to call Scara on. Crumbs will be able to shield someone. They're really going to have what they need to get in these fights. Very big, very big fight about to happen. Yeah. Uh, late game has pretty much arrived. Frozen Heart is so close for Cruiser. He needs about 500 more gold, and he would be able to purchase that. That would be monstrous because attack speed reductions are doubly effective against Aatrox. He needs it for the sustain and for his own damage. See what the siege power here of, is of this cursed team. Last time it was just Quas face first into the turret and yeah. stopping the team. Bloodwell was used on that. He's got it again, so see if they get their patience per tried here. It's also harder for Curse to turret dive because they don't have the armor. Whoever the turret yeah, aggro's onto minions. Yeah, is going to be taking much more damage than their normal tank. They almost need to find a catch. They can't even get cop in for shots here. He's yeah, the Baron back. buff is gone as well. They did not really make very good progress with that buff. Okay, so this Cutie would be Pie. a moment for them to maybe go, since Cutie Pie has to finish off those minions. Get the stun! He gets it onto Scara. That's going to be big damage. Can they get the slow as well? Crumbs is able to kick him back onto the turret. Cutie Pie now calling from the outside, but he stops it short to try and get the auto attacks in. The rest of the team Nobody got is it. kiting very well. There goes Quas. The turret's getting hit up by Cop, but what are they going to do for this? Quas goes down, the turret as well. They just get Quas. The turret will stay up. Big for Dig. Dignitas managed a clean disengage from that fight, which is so important. Cruiser was able to tank out enough damage with that active on his Saracen Brace. Just 
an incredible hold by Dignitas. They might be in position to win the game now. Dragons a minute 30. They have time if somebody is on their way. Cop and Bunny look like they are going to be going for Dragons. So they'll keep that out of Dig's hands, which at this point, Dragons that level average, level 15. So it's going to be worth its max amount of gold. And when I say they might be able to win the game now, I mean, they might be able to win the game in about 20 minutes. Yeah. But it just means they're not losing now and that they get even more time to finish. Watch, it seemed like Scar was going to go down, but Quas couldn't quite get in range to chain the CC onto Scar, and it allowed he, him to escape. Also, Curse split focused. Half onto Scar, half onto Cruiser. And then once the Shockwave hit, the rest of Curse realized they had to back away. Quas was so far in, he could not run away, and it ended up being a 1 for 0 with no turret kills. Crumbs in a dangerous spot. Safe right now on his own. But could have been hit up by Voiboy Boy and Cop right there. They're trying to do what they can as quick as they can to clear vision on Baron. So they can get a little bit of their own. 61.3 to 51.7. So we're looking at pretty much 10k here. That Dig has now been able to thwart off. Five turrets down they've been able to thwart off. Start coming back into this game. 13 to 7 is something they're trying to work on as well. Scar is doing a great job at 327 in farm as well as Cutie Pie surpassing Cop, which does not happen a lot in farm at 347 to 297. Yeah, he's going to be a very scary Lucian. Also, going for Alacrity Boots, something yeah. you very at rarely that. see when AD carries. But Moose Speed is at a premium for Lucian, especially yeah. when he's trying to kite out Quas. you got so many things to slow you from Quas's E coming in from the Caliber Nat Glitter Lance. He's keeping himself safe. He's, he doesn't have the Mikhail's Crucible like Bunny Fufu has built up. Kiwi Kid's got a full inventory right now, and there's a Negatron Cloak there to keep himself safe. Both teams really respecting the amount of power that's coming from both sides right now as they just kind of poke with as much as they have. Yeah, I wonder where the Cutie Pie said it. Is he going to take the blue buff for himself on a double AP team? Yep. <laughs> I guess so. Quick answer. Uh, obviously, Cruiser doesn't need it because he has close to max cooldown and a bunch of mana. But you would expect that to go over to Skara. It, it was more of a Cutie Pie didn't get spotted while he was over there, and Orianna can hold off the Baron pressure more. It someone may as well get it. And it is actually very good on Lucian. He has a very heavy spell casting AD carry. He's saying, guys, do what you can so I can get gold for this last Whisper. Yeah. You're not going to be able to buy it. This fight is going to be pushed very hard right now. You can see Curse wants a little bit more vision on it. Crumbs is trying to do what he can. Still, it's just standing in this spot. It's been about two to three minutes here. And that does not, it's not good for Curse. We saw a definitive play from them before, and now they're stalling. Yeah. It's, it's dangerous times for them right now. Cutie Pie has enough damage that if they don't get onto him, he will finish off the magic resist heavy tanks that Curse has brought into the game. Very big for Cruiser. Frozen Heart's been finished up for him. He's going to want to get himself straight into that fight as well. 3-1-1 one, and one after having quite a hard time in the top lane getting pushed back by Quas all day. But they've made it finally. Dignitas is kind of down that long and beaten path, and they've found the late game now. Built up to that full form that Scar likes to be in. The Last Whisper could be coming in here for Cutie Pie. He gets himself back and purchased with a few wards. So Dignitas looks fight ready. Curse has already been set up. And as we get later and later game, oh dear, he's become more and more important. Dignitas actually trying to get control of the Baron area, which is so bold considering they've been down so much. It just shows you how confident they're feeling in their team strength right now. Eight and a half thousand gold down. See what they can do to pressure themselves into this fight. Crumbs could have a good kick to get in, but that leaves him to be zeroed out instantly by Lulu front yeah. end damage. Another hit by a Dominate. So many decisions, but you just think on the other side, it's so dangerous. Yeah, for Dignitas to win these fights, they actually want to play a fairly disengage heavy style. They need to wait for people to walk into the Shockwave, and I'm a Cutie Pie needs to kite back with the Culling and the rest of Lucian's skills. Uh, it's a very touch and go game right now. Finishing that last Whisper is huge. Dignitas, hearts pounding right now along with the fans. They've always said that this is the bane here, the B word for them on the top side of the map was Not something lately, that they wouldn't focus, but yeah. right, Crumb said lately, it's something that they could be able to work off of, and they've done it two games in a row. Well, not in a row, but two games lately that have been able to really give them an advantage in this late game. 40 minutes perfect, in, maybe. that's the Talisman of Ascension. Dominic gets hit up.
He's going to be going for the... Ooh, the Lantern over. I thought he was going to try to flash out of that one. Buddy Fufu, he's stuck. He can't go down and get himself past the rubble of the turret. But this Here could comes be Curse. the disengage. The calling goes Lock out. It. It's going to split him. The ace in the hole goes right around the team, and it's going to be the engagement. Crumbs gets hit up, but he kicks back. Cop on the front line gets a good shot, but the safeguard gets Crumbs to Scara. But they split now. They're trying to pretty much... Get the tunnel going on, and Curse is just going to say, no, it's Baron. Support for support. Nobody able to block for Kiwi Kid, so he ends up going down. Curse can kill this very quickly. One of the underrated things about AP Lulu is how much damage she adds to allies' auto attacks. It's about 150 extra damage every auto attack from picks when she throws that on Quas. Oh, that's a big damage that they are taking, though. Skara, these shockwaves really helping. As you can see, even the fans loving it to keep these yeah. guys in the fights. Like we said, Dignitas has that area of effect damage when Cruiser hits that all. Scara and Kiwi Kid with Tibber as they are able to control a huge area. Yeah, this was a nice initiation there by Kiwi Kid because they saw the Void Boy. Void Boy just went bin bottom, so he couldn't actually save here. Scara wanted to wait a split second longer. They would have killed Dominate yeah. as well. That could have swung the game, but because they didn't, there's that ace in the hole. Kiwi Kid flashes kind of in the wrong angle. If he was a little bit closer towards the rest of Dignitas, he would have been able to save himself. But this Baron dance continues. It's been going on for quite some time. This Chris, Baron goes down so fast. Chris is not taking any... Ooh, They're gonna get Sonic it. Wave hits. This would be one hell of a steal. Crumbs on the outside. Sonic Wave going to be coming back up again for him. Baron oh, is quite off low. Of yeah, they are definitely going to pull off this. Scara coming from the backside. And this is just their decision. They have no deep wards. They're pretty much doing this for safety. They didn't know how far away the rest of Dick and Toss yeah. was. Uh, that, that would have been... A fairly safe Baron. They, they could have had people uh, trying to block Lee Sin out. And Dominate on Elise has better smite execute potential uh, than Crumbs. It still would have been probably about a 40 60 or a 30 70. And that's not a chance Chris wanted to take. It's a perfect example of being able to use your composition when it comes to fruition. We see four kills on Cruiser in the top lane and only three to I'm a cutie pie, but the rest of the team is working these fights so well that it doesn't matter there's kills across the board on the other side. Dignitas really breathing a short amount of oxygen to keep in this one, but it's keeping him alive. A really key item that was just picked up recently that we have to touch on is Void Boy's Lich Bane. So many of the Lulu builds in the past have Lich Bane pretty much after Athene's because it is just so damn good on Lulu, helping her get in damage. He finished it just now. Uh, remember, so it is hitting for big, big damage right here. After every auto, it's going to be 460 extra damage for him on that two-second cooldown. Scar in the front looking for a very big shockwave here. We'll keep our eyes on that ball as well as on Crumbs. They're the two fastest to move on this. Kiwi Kid also could get a Ooh. flash in there. The flash hook trying to come out from Bunny Fufu on the initiation. They did get Scar's flash though, so if yep. they land any type of cocoon on him, the game will pretty much be over. This is another position Curse is in where if they get a catch, they could potentially end. But Dignitas probably has better chances in this fight yep. than they did the last time. There's no turret protecting them like the fight was on the other side, though. So it's a very touchy moment right here. Dodging out everything that they need to. Ace Ooh. in the hole. A little over a quarter of the health going on to Kiwi Kid. Or off of him, I should say. Boy Boy gets himself in for a Glitter Lance Cop. Every so often, getting the pokes in. Staying well, out of range for any no engagements. Yet. Nothing there. Quas gets Rune Prison. Back and forth. The Flash Timbers goes on to Cop. He gets a great shield in the Wild Growth as well. Will they be able to get to the back line? No. Curse is in their face right now. And Cruiser, he's going to be going down. They Boy, do not down. have the Rise Control anymore. And Curse stops Pursuit, but it's only for one Ooh. kill. Void Boy actually flashed out. I thought I'm a cutie pie. Killed him. They do get the inhibitor. Yep. And they get a kill on a Dignitas. A very valiant defense, but they can't quite save it. I'd say the initiation was a hair late by Dignitas right there. And you can just see how close these teams actually are with that last fight. This has to be scary for Curse. For the third time at that inhibitor, to only get the inhibitor in one kill means you're, you're going backwards. Yeah, Shockwave only hit two there from Dignitas, and they needed a little bit more. But look at how much damage I'm a Cutie Pie was doing there. Mm -hmm. The flash right as he would have died to that. And the chase continues Ooh. from Dignitas. They might try and force a Baron or something at this point. I'm a cutie pie. Very strong. This fight is chaos. Whoa. Going on to Skara. It's going to be Quas actually on the top side. If he can get a nice flight in. 
They will be able to pop up the entire team. Scar is quite low, but nobody wants to get the initial kill. They missed the, the cocoon just on the left of his shoulder, but it's Cop with the rest of the team. It took a while, that, but they finally got it. That was just confidence and communication. It looked like I Will Dominate was on a suicide mission, but he, because he knew he had the wild growth from Void Boy behind him, Dignitas trying to force Wow, Cruiser was dead for some reason. That could very well just cost them Baron, and maybe more. Kiwi Kid on the outside. That smite is up. The flash is down for Kiwi, though, on the last initiation. Funny Fufu -foo taking a heck of a lot of damage there, and Curse looks to be They're in a very sore low. position as the vision comes in from Dignitas. This could be very big. Another hold off right there because I'm Kitty Pie is doing so much damage. Additionally, it's because no one was itemizing for him. All the threat was from Ryze and Orianna, and that's why he's went full offensive items. Soon he'll even have Blade of the Ruined King, and that is just an immense amount of damage coming out of Illusion. This game is crazy, right? Near 40 minutes into this game, and we finally get a bit of armor being built out. That Warden's Mail onto Quas. They've still been going for damage, and the average player has about 15,000 to 14, 14 to 15,000 gold on Curse right now. Look at the other side, 12, 10, 13, but Cutie Pie sitting at 17,000 yep. along with Cobb. So he's been keeping himself right on par. Dignitas has channeled a lot of farm into him, and once again, the Baron start is there. Cutie Pie saying, I know you're there. How long are they going to respect that? There's a ward inside. It is a steal chance, but it is ridiculously dangerous. Crumbs can do it. He gets in. He nope. does not steal it. That is what they needed. He goes down in the attempt. Five of six barons, or five of six dragons, and two of two barons. Yeah. Puts Curse in this position. Curse was fed up with all that dancing around. This time they went for it, knowing the steal was a fairly low percentage chance, and they predicted that Dignitas wouldn't have the team fight right there. Good timing. That would almost have been better for Crumbs to not even try the steal. Yeah. Uh, he's probably going to die regardless, and with the 60 second death timers, it means his team now has to defend 4v5, maybe even temporarily 3v5, because there are super minions on the far side of Dignitas's base right now, and I'm a cutie pie. Can't take any harass with that build. Oh, doesn't get the shield on the no. ball. Couldn't move in time. This Half is HP for real Skara. trouble. Cops just on the outside poking in the turret. He doesn't need help from anyone else to get that. And Curtis is going to methodically walk this one in and surgically remove Dignitas from the map. Yeah, this could be it. This is going to be three inhibitors right here for Curse while they wait for Crumbs to respawn. Uh, and a base turret is dead for Dignitas. 15,000 gold on it. the lead. Curse having a little bit of trouble trying to close this one out previously, but they're in the base looking for the gold right now, looking for the home plate. They're going to get a good engagement on Quas going right into the middle of the fight, pulling out Aatrox this game. 19 to 8 is the score as they look for a few more kills, getting one on a cruiser, one on a Skara as the Nexus turret goes down. Bunny Fufu grabs up a teddy bear for himself as a present, and they grab down the Nexus at 47 minutes. And even though it took them a little bit of time, Curse's domination of Dignitas continues. They are now 3-0 against them on the season. They take their fourth place spot, so they are safe in the standings based on the head-to-head -head performance. That feels good for them. They, they had a better mid-game team, yep. but they won late game because of better team coordination. They had just enough of a goal lead to carry them through that moment. What a game. One of those games where a lot of this happened back in the spring split, go past the summer even, where teams would get ahead and then they'd kind of falter, didn't know where to go. A little more control here even, but we did see Curse taking a step back after that inhibitor every time, but then they finally found their way in. This will definitely be a game for them to look at as a win with things to yeah. still learn from. Absolutely, I mean, enough.